preparations for passivation, the actual process and also the wrongdoings which people commonly do during the passivation, we will show you the mistakes and how we correct them. With the growing transportation of liquid chemicals in bulk, a modern chemical tanker has to carry quite a varied type of cargo. SS is one of the most widely used material for cargo tank construction in chemical tankers. The advantage of stainless steel SS is that it allows the vessel to carry almost all kinds of chemicals. SS tanks are easier to clean and gives a very good shining impression of the cargo tanks. The SS is typically composed of carbon, chromium, nickel and molybdenum. SS can also be in the form of a cladding which is typically 3 mm thick. Although SS is frequently referred to as being corrosion resistant, this is not really the case. SS acquires its quality of resistance to corrosion after treatment with an aqueous solution of nitric acid which forms a thin layer of chromium oxide on the surface of the metal. This film is called the passive film and the process is known as passivation. SS can be destroyed easily by mechanical action or chemical damage. Aggressive cargoes like sulfuric acid will break the film down, causing discoloration of the tank surface. This discoloration may vary from light brown to pitch black. Another effect of corrosion is pitting and scale formation. Pitting is due to insufficient rinsing with fresh water after salt water wash or insufficient steaming. The presence of chlorides will accelerate the corrosion process. Pitting can be extremely dangerous as it can make a pinhole through the SS cladding. A good maintenance on stainless steel tanks, especially on the chemical tankers, requires them to be passivated once in a year or when the vessel carries three aggressive cargoes consecutively. When the vessel carries aggressive cargoes such as sulfuric acid or phosphoric acid, the tanks are to be thoroughly cleaned as per the executive ship management policies. Before any entry into the cargo tanks, enclosed space entry procedures must be complied with. As per our company's policy, before entering a tank, we are supposed to fill an enclosed space entry permit. For filling this enclosed space entry permit, we are first required to check the oxygen in the space with the portable oxygen meter and then we should check for the combustible gases and also we have to check for the toxic vapors of the last cargo carried with the dragger tube. Now we are checking for the oxygen content in the tank. For checking the oxygen we are required to check at at least three different heights. Now we will check for hydrocarbons. Since hydrocarbons are heavier than air, they will be concentrated in the bottom parts of the tanks. That is why we should measure the gases in the lower parts. The percentage volume of hydrocarbon in the tank is nil. This is a dragger tube. This is used to measure the vapors of the last cargo present. Since the last cargo was styrene, we are using the tube for styrene. We put in the tank and use this pump to aspirate it and we get the ppm of the concentration of styrene inside the tank.
Since there is no change in the color, we can conclude that there are no traces of styrene in the tank. Today we will be doing the mopping and drying operation of the 10 port cargo tank. I have already checked the oxygen and the LDL and also the traces of the last cargo. All are satisfactory. So you can enter the tank. While entering the tank, again check the oxygen level with the portable meter which you should take along. If you feel anything wrong inside the tank, if you feel uncomfortable, you just come out of the tank. We will also be keeping one SCBA set, one stretcher, one heaving line outside the tank and one person will be standby on the top of the tank with the radio in communication with the bridge. Shall we go alone sir? No, always for entering a tank, you should have at least two persons. Can we carry a portable O2 monitor sir? Yes, you are supposed to carry one portable O2 monitor and whenever the alarm sounds, you should immediately exit the tank. Also one more thing. If the person standing by on the top of the tank sees someone collapsing inside the tank due to lack of oxygen, do not rush inside the tank. You inform the bridge, muster the persons and then don your SCBA sets and go for the rescue. Be careful, sometimes when you disturb the liquid inside the tank, there are chances of emission of vapors. The enclosed space permit has been approved by the master and the tank is ready for entry. You can enter the tank. Passivity meter. The passivity meter measures the thickness of the passive film. The readings should be taken at maximum locations for an accurate measurement. We have gathered here today to uh, discuss about the procedures and the safety precaution for the passivation of the fuel tanks which we are going to do after discharging in Altamira. The supervisor will distribute all the papers to you. These papers gives you the individual jobs for each group. So please afterwards, after we discuss anything, please study your individual jobs. Now basically, team one, we will start with three starboard, okay, 
So they will be doing 3 starboard, 3 port, 4 port, 4 starboard, 6 starboard and 6 port. And team B will start from off. They will do 2 12 starboard, 9 starboard, 9 port, 8 port, 8 starboard and 7 starboard. All persons on deck should wear chemical resistant boot, hand gloves, chemical resistant gloves and helmets with, with visors. Okay. Okay, and the person who is not not handling the acid can wear chemical goggles, but the person who is handling the acid have to wear helmet with a visor because the chemical goggles is only protecting your eyes, not your face. But when you are handling chemicals, if the chemical spray comes on your face, for that you need the helmet with a shield. Take water to be running continuously. I have already told you, fresh water hose and nozzle to be ready for rinsing. If you see from somewhere, especially when the, when the machine is running, when it hits the bottle one cover, there may be a chance that few drops will come out. Of course, there is canvas, but still if few drops come out immediately, fresh water rinse it. Check continuously for the leaks. If any, okay, if any machine does not work, you have to stop the pump, then pick up the hose, put, it, put the machine on a bucket and then change, change the machine. Same procedure when you pick up the hose. When, when pulling out the passivation hose from the tank, one person to continuously wash it with fresh water. So, uh, if you have any questions, you can ask now. Can we use the Wilden pump to transfer the water? You can use the Wilden pump to transfer the water as that would be fast. But remember that acid would only be transferred by siphoning and not by Wilden pump. Okay, you have any questions? What hoses are to be used for passivation? Only chemical resistant hoses to be used for passivation. So these are the hoses which are white in color. These are to be used for passivation. Captain Kim has been in the chemical tanker industry for very long time and he has done a lot of passivation. So he will give you his some safety procedures and some guidelines on the passivation. This work is very special job. And uh, this job is uh, stainless uh, Coating tank about uh, 10 years or 15 years ago we started. Before our the chemical tankers, coating is epoxy or zinc is also uh, coating. So normal people, we carry to the light steel, carry to the separate exchanges. We are cleaning, just cross and carry to the separate exchanges. Then many happened the troubles was um, my steels, the collision from the sulfuric acid, any other same acid. So we making the stainless. So normal we used to the stainless in carbon tank. Says three of four, says three on six and now says three on three one seven and normally we use now. Now more than high grade of nine now coming down. So our pet normal used to the 36 years. So preservation work that means is the stainless the surface. We have to uh, suppose the patient creams some chemical. The stainless is very soon break down the some salt sea water or some chemicals this is the meeting between the master and the chief officer to determine the amount of acids and fresh water to be used in the passivation process as for our tank inspection of eight weeks and the passivity meter readings the condition of the tank is fairly okay so i think uh, for that uh, and eight weeks also has been passivated in uh, October last year and then after that we have not carried any aggressive cargo as I see in the list of last few cargo. Uh, there are some stains on the deck head as well as on the forward bulkhead of the 8 wing tanks. So. Yeah that is correct. So what I suggest is then we give uh, say a little bit more say 10 minutes more wash on the top wash right. and also when you remove the butterworth machines we keep the forward butterworth machines always there so that the forward part is always getting washed. So can we put uh, fresh water directly and measure it by the radar gauge or can we use the butterworth machine and calculate the time required for the fresh water to calculate the quantities? You see that will make the process faster 
But the problem here is that to do efficient passivation, we have to make sure that the ratio of water is very accurate. And to put the water in tank or to check by the timing, there will be some errors in there and it will be not very accurate. So I suggest we fill it into drums and transfer by the wind and pump. Right, so then I'll just do the calculations and let you know the quantities. Okay. The total amount of uh, fresh water and uh, nitric acid and hydrofluoric acid to be used in the passivation process will depend uh, not only on the size of the tank but also on the condition of the tank as well as the number of uh, machines used. As we now see here that uh, we will be recording about uh, 414 liters of uh, nitric acid and about uh, 30 liters of uh, hydrofluoric acid and about 1000 liters of water. This nitric acid when we calculate we also take into account the fact that uh, the manufacturers supply the nitric acid in a concentration of about 65 to 63 percent and also the hydrofluoric acid about 55 percent. So that is taken into account when we are calculating the ratios of the passivating acid. Okay, now, now you have the solution. So this you are putting into 8 port, that is the first time. But when you transfer to 8 starboard, we will expect some transfer losses. So at 8 starboard, you add about 30 liters of uh, nitric acid, maybe 5 liters of uh, hydrofluoric acid, and uh, about the water, about 50 60 liters of water. For the process of passivation, it is very important to use the proper personal protective equipment the PPE as we call it. The PPE to be used consists of chemical suit. This is a chemical resistant suit with elastic bands on the hands and the legs. Also we have to use the chemical protective boots, the chemical protective gloves, the chemical goggles and also for the persons handling the acids should be using a helmet with a chemical protective visor. During the passivation, we use nitric acid, hydrofluoric acid and also a lot of fresh water. The hydrofluoric acid is normally supplied in drums of 200 liters and the nitric acid is supplied in a drum of 65 liters. This is the Butterworth machine. The Butterworth hose is connected here and with a pressure of 6 kilos, this effectively sprays the passivation solution all around the tank. This is the octopus flange. This is used to connect up to 4 Butterworth hoses to the discharge line in order to have a good recirculation. Due to the extreme corrosive nature of the nitric acid, as well as the hydrofluoric acid, we use a special chemical resistant hose during passivation. If we use a normal tank cleaning hose during this process, it might lead to corrosion inside the hoses. This is a passivity meter. This is used to measure the thickness of the passive flame that is the oxide flame on the stainless steel surface before and after passivation. To indicate a good oxide flame, the readings should be more than 60, ideally around 70 on this meter. The test kit of the passivity meter contains potassium chloride. The sensor of the passivity meter is kept in this solution. Also we have a 5% solution of acetic acid. We use a special strip of paper which is supplied as a part of the passivity kit. Then put a few drops of acetic acid. And then we take the sensor out of the potassium chloride solution and hold it vertically on the strip of paper which is placed over the stainless steel plate. At the same time, we have to do the earthing of the plate in order to get a good reading. We then turn the meter on, select stainless steel and get the reading of the passive flame. After the completion of the passivation, 
we do a fresh water rinsing of the tanks to remove all traces of the nitric acid and the hydrofluoric acid. To confirm that the water residue in the tank does not have any acid remaining, we use a pH meter to find out the pH value of the solution. A neutral solution should show a pH value around 7. If a pH meter is not available, we use a pH strip which is color coded. The change of color on the strip indicates if the solution is acidic or neutral. All stainless steel equipments on the vessel, like the pressure vacuum valves, blind flanges, Y pieces, U pieces and perch pipe covers should be passivated whenever opportunity arises. A lot of care is needed while lowering the tank cleaning machines to avoid damages to the tank cleaning machines as well as the cargo tanks itself. The chemicals should be added to the water only after the completion of fresh water recirculation leak check. Otherwise, if the flange leaks, it is very hazardous for the persons to tighten the flange and also it is corrosive to the deck. When you are pouring the acid into the tank, you should always put on the visor to protect your face from any acid which might spray. The octopus is used to connect up to four tank cleaning machines on the pump discharge line for recirculation of the passivation acids. Now we are showing you the procedures for checking the leak. Before introducing the acids into the cargo tank, a leak check must be carried out with fresh water in order to rectify any leaks in the I got the cash in the bag, stadium pack Born a rock star in this life, gone live it up on the attack Baby, I'm bad, I just wanna get caught up in this life I'm crazy, I'm mad, doing no cap Only God wants you, better go live it up Cash in the bag, stadium pack Baby, I'm bad, yeah. baby, I'm bad I just wanna stay bad, stay mad, shit by my shoulder Cause they treat me like an outcast I ain't gonna take that, stay back I'll be swinging hard till the hits come in all caps I ain't gonna lay back, pray that someone's gonna help me Ain't nobody like that I ain't gonna wait, that's all fat Give me one shot and I'll never get the throne back I'm sick of being cautious I'ma go cause something, can't stop this I'ma steal everybody's lane, call it shoplift Sick of hearing everyone complain when they thoughtless Taste the pain, it's like candy canes It makes me go change into a better frame Into a better name, society's insane We all live for fame, yeah Cash in the bag, stadium packed Born a rock star in this life, gonna live it up on the attack Baby, I'm bad, I just wanna get caught up in this life I'm crazy, I'm mad, do it no cap Only God wants you, better go live it up Cash in the bag, stadium packed Baby, I'm bad, baby, I'm bad
After all safety precautions have been carried out, the cargo pump should be taken on local control and started on a low pressure. After confirming that there are no leaks in the system, the pump pressure can be gradually increased. Continuous monitoring is essential during passivation. After passivation, the solution of acid and water must be discharged as per the MARPOL regulations. After the completion of passivation, the tank cleaning machines must be flushed thoroughly with fresh water to remove any residue of acids and sea water. If the passivation process takes more than a day, then this must be done at the end of each day. It is a good practice to passivate the stainless steel manifold drip tray after the completion of passivation of the cargo tanks. About 12 to 24 hours after the completion of passivation, the cargo tanks should be washed with fresh water to remove all residues of acids. All openings on the cargo tanks, like the tank domes and Butterworth ports, must be manually rinsed with fresh water as they may be out of reach of the tank cleaning machines. During the fresh water wash, all pipelines and drains should be very carefully rinsed. Do not forget to remove or slack all the manifold blanks for effective rinsing. Also control the flow of fresh water by the manifold valves by building up the water pressure and flushing the full internal cross-section of the pipelines. Keep all the drains open for flushing. During the fresh water rinsing, the pH value of the discharge must be closely monitored to determine the acidity. Fresh water rinsing can be stopped after the discharge water shows a neutral reading on the pH meter. However, as a good practice, the washing is continued for a few more minutes after that. Continuous stripping of the tanks should be done during fresh water rinsing and steaming. After the fresh water washing, the tanks have to be steamed for a duration of 1 to 2 hours. The temperature of the tank has to be carefully monitored and should not exceed 50 degrees Celsius. Thorough gas freeing of the cargo tanks must be carried out and all enclosed space entry procedures complied with before entering the tanks after steaming. After the completion of passivation, a detailed inspection of the cargo tanks must be carried out to determine the repair of the passive film and the reduction of the discoloration or pitting. Passivation is one of the most critical and hazardous operations that is carried out on chemical tankers. However, a thorough planning will ensure an efficient and safe operation. Always remember that there can be no compromise with safety at any point of time.